we're working on carbon dioxide uh, removal. That's uh, from the CDR. Uh, opportunities and potentials in Nigeria. Though I'll be constraining it to um, more of the geological perspective, right? Yeah. Um, just the geological perspective, giving you all the um, aspects of it. So this is my outline. It does the introduction, CO2 capture, utilization storage, the potential for storage in Nigeria, and the recent developments concerning CCUS. Um, in conclusion. So, um, as a matter of fact, there are some terms I'll be using. Capture, removal, sequestration, storage. Yeah. They are all the whole, they are the whole, um, let me put it this way, the whole terms that when we talk about, um, carbon sequestration, the whole capture. In Nigeria, now, these are just facts. Yeah. I'm just giving. Um, I, but this from carbon based and other sources just shows that Nigeria, evidently, we know, um, global, um, global warming is an issue. And we know the consequence of global warming is climate change. Several, um, methods have been, um, uh, brought forward that it could be, uh, a, a way to remediate uh, carbon, since, uh, gas carbon dioxide, since it's cheap among them, among the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Now, every country and every continent has had its own share of it. And now, Nigeria, particularly, which is in Africa, is, uh, as we all know, is the largest economy, um, based on population, in terms of, uh, population and the economy of, uh, any country in Africa. It's larger than any of them. Mm-hmm. According to findings, and several reports. They say it's expected to overtake uh, China to become the world's second most uh, populous country. That's at the end of this century that we are in. Secondly, is the world's uh, 17 biggest uh, emitter of greenhouse gases. That's as at 215. And we all know that we still produce um, uh, petroleum. So, of course, that should have increased as at this time. As in terms of emission of greenhouse gases. And uh, it is Africa's largest producer of crude oil and world's ninth largest um, exporter. And in terms of climate change, uh, as you say, it does also have its own impact in Nigeria. We go from the northern parts where we were seeing droughts. That's why we have the cattle rearing, the uh, headsmen coming down to the south because the um, vegetation down here is greener. While over there, it's no more green. Because lack of rainfall, the humidity has reduced, the length of it, and so on and so forth, which you all know are consequences of global warming. And um, as a result, we have the effect, which is climate change. And in several uh, meetings, both COP26 and 27, the government has pledged to reduce, as Nigerian government, its greenhouse gas emission by 20% by 2030. As when compared to business as usual, with other people's uh, level of reduction and commitment, including me. However, they see pledge that it will increase by 45% on the condition of international support, which is funded, which we know is very crucial when Africa, as we all know, most of these technologies, they fund more than just the preparatory stages in several uh, continents around the world. But Africa is still new to them. So funding is crucial. Be that as it may, now in Nigeria, yeah, this is um, just showing energy consumption by source um, that's from 1970 to 2020. You can see uh, the light yellow, we have wind and solar power fuels. Uh, the power fuel is more, cons- uh, is more consumed because now we look more than a third of Nigerians lack access to electricity, which we know that, yes, Africa needs more energy to even uh, produce more energy itself to you know, stay with it, and Nigeria particularly has a stellar Instead, most of them rely on the firewood, you know, what we burn, we use that to do a lot of cooking. Even people that have the electricity still sometimes want to cook larger party food, you still need to use. It's like um, the biofuel and the waste 
which they bond together to make such food. And we know these things emit methane, uh, CO2, um, ozone, the likes of them. This, this, uh, this part. And we have the gas, the oil, and coal. These ones, they are, they are, they are below, but well, we know they have high standard, uh, high uh, emissions as well, which we know from vehicle activities and so on so, and so forth. While in terms of uh, emissions, that's by sector, right? Um, as, aside from um, non CO2, uh, we have the other flue gases, but CO2, as we can see from here, we um, we have land use, non combustion from building, transportation, industry, and power and heat. Uh, this this just shows this one is just from 1970 to the range. Uh, we know we have gas flaring within um, the southern part of Nigeria where the heavy industries are located. Gas flaring and venting are major sources of methane emission and CO2. Of course, um, big cities the likes of Lagos, Port Harcourt, uh, Enugu. We know where other refineries are uh, located, like in Kaduna, Wari, and Potako, per se. All these places uh, we have, even we've not even talk about the, uh, if we go to Potako, we have uh, what they call coal fire, illegal refineries, where these things are being emitted. Um, the, the consequences of such gas flame, at the end of the day, we tend to see suits around, around, uh, environments around the areas and even acid rain and the consequences of this and so CO2 is also embedded within their based on industry and, and transportation due to heavy population in most of these cities. All right. Um, in terms of I was trying to explain initially that um, CO2 capture utilization and um, storage. You know, this is what we call CCUS. It's all encompassing. You can't just, you know, they are all embedded. You can't just do one. Uh, it's, it could be, it should be integrated. But we have the transportation, the captured transportation down, uh, what we want to use it for, and how we store it itself. So now, uh, the major component, as I've said earlier on, uh, is chiefly CO2, which is acclaimed to be one gas that is causing the ever increasing menace in human race and its entire environment. Now, let me just define this. Allow me to just take this. Say so carbon capture classification is the process of removing, that's what we call um, CDR, carbon dioxide uh, removal from the atmosphere and locking it away for decades, centuries, or millennia. Generally, right? Now, uh, based on technology, there are four main technology solutions for extracting CO2 from big point sources now. Talking about industries, uh, as you can see from this um, chart here, obviously sources mm -hmm. down to the capture and um, move down to compression. This is where uh, we rush on it, so uh, it has to be uh, compressible mm -hmm. because you just don't capture that way. You have to put it in high um, temperature and, pre uh, and, and pressure. Yeah, that's where you turn it into liquid. Just the same way they transport um, uh, normal gas. Then you can use it for other things if uh, you want to use the gas. If it's, if it's for enhanced cobalt methane, you can get uh, methane out of it. You can use it for energy, as it just maybe. You can store it uh, for enhanced oil recovery. And this is the means of transportation here. Yeah. It's like being transported this way, because this way, transportation down to storage and utilization. So, that. so now, in the four uh, methods I just wanted to say initially, we have the pre combustion, post combustion. Can you hear me? Yes, we have. Yes. Okay. Post combustion, also fill and um, capture from the industrial processes, which we have um, we do without that sweeping or the refineries. And shortly, I'm going to show you some um, some of the um, some of these uh, sources. Okay, this uh, summary here is a general um, that's from this uh, author here. Just showing several parameters and the usefulness of this. This is a capture stage here, right? These technologies. Now, first, we start with the post combustion. That's after um, the industry. We are looking at these parameters, uh, how effective each of them are. Now, in terms of CO2 concentration, uh, acid gases, this is the volume in terms of pre combustion, post combustion, and we see the oxygen combustion, as you can see. See, this has more um, CO2 concentration in terms of acid gases when you work on them. 
So this technology looks um, promising too. Uh, see the equipment size now. We have a uh, medium size. You can work on a large size. Why low size equipment depends on investment now. Looking at temperature and pressure. This is where they can be low, very, and this is kind of types of temperature to have and type of pressure that is needed in it. What the potential? Uh, you see the integrated gasification combined circle and uh, combines, which can effectively use H2S. Now, I will see this other part that can be applied to the, to the existing coal combustion plants. So they have their specifications where they could be applied for. Uh, and there's possibility if you could integrate all as well to work. Uh, these are all uh, more scientific than what I'm just um, presenting here. So, novel cycles have been employed in similar ways. Now, look at the pros and cons now. Um, for pre-combustion, we have a low energy penalty and post-combustion. While the post-combustion, small concentration of CO2 can be captured. That's retrofit and it's retrofit technology. That's the advantage of it. And um, why the other one is uh, efficiency of CO2 capture, which is 100%, as, as you can see from this year, that's 70% of getting the CO2 gas itself. However, the cons now, we have uh, for the combustion, the drying of sink gas and its treatment prior to CO2 capture. That's requires high investment. The other one too, so that's for post-combustion, high operating and regeneration costs. They, in all, they all have the high cost in it. Uh, it takes a lot of funds to do this. Now, in state of the art, uh, as I've said, as I've seen here, integrated gas fusion combined with um, cycling and ammonia. So, all this just shows um, the disadvantage and advantage of capturing CO2 in the, uh, from the atmosphere or any other sources. Now, I've not started talking about um, the other means by which CO2 can also be captured. As I've said, I'm constraining this to just the geological part and looking at it from a uh, the industrial perspective of it, which we know we have in Nigeria, is sustainable. Now, okay, now looking at um, a comparison of um, major sequestration types. Now, my new sequestration here involves everything low capture and utilization itself, and where it's been stored, mm -hmm. types and estimates of in terms of their parameters. Excuse me. Now, so look at the sequestration type. We have oceanic afforestation, which is a vegetation part and soil. Oil carbon geologic, which uh, it's my area, ocean ion catalyzation and chemical aspects. Now look at uh, the parameters here in terms of permanence, volatility, volatility, reversible, stability, capacity, time scale, and cost. Now, if you see for oceanic, now this shows it has medium in terms of the range. This according to this photo here. Now the time scale 500 years, the cost is low. Or a station which we can just plant trees around the normal photosynthesis process, which um, oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide is given out. It means we need to plant more uh, more trees. But now the capacity requires more land, and we know how population is. Everybody's building, no planning. Yes, I'm looking at Nigerian perspective. A time scale is 80 years. Yes, trees will still be high. Depends on the type of tree you are going to plant. So in terms of cost, is low. You don't need so much to do that planting. Just need land. Now, soil carbon also somehow uh, like that of deforestation also requires land as well. Mm -hmm. Now, for geologic aspects, now the permanent variable depending on the condition of um, subsurface or the media which you are storing CO2. Now, it's low in terms of volatility, reversible. Yes, you can use it for something else. As you can use it to enhance recovery. The capacity is uncertain, depends on the depth and the thickness in the uh, formation. Or the particular media that's uh, whether using coal or you're using for uh, saline aquifer or you're using for or, um, depleted oil and gas. Or we'll get to that phase very soon. And the time scale is also unknown and is um, high. Now, ocean aspect too is kind of um, low in terms of permanence and capacity is uncertain. Time scale is um, unknown and cost is uncertain as well. For chemical, now the permanence is high, very low, reversible, no, that's this takes it by using the oldest metallic framework, the likes of it and other parts, maybe absorption, the likes of other means using other chemical. Capacity is large, time scale is infinite, 
for the first time. Now, uh, this just shows the advantages of several uh, seeing them based on parameters of these sequestration types. So, um, we're going to be talking in terms of Nigeria on the basis of the geological aspect. Shortly. So, this is just showing the whole, um, the whole bottom form exactly here in terms of the atmospheric uh, cycle, the carbon cycle, how it goes ranging from plants. Uh, this is for geological storage. Now uh, we get to see emissions from here. That's um, the volcano. I mean, this is a natural phenomenon. It's combustion, industrial aspect, combustion of fossil fuels. These are plants assimilating them. Um, animals also, that's the plants, animals, and they take this, they eat this um, assimilation. So, and the oceans also, as I've just stated, now can be stored in the soil itself. And now, this is just the whole CCS chain, just to create a better picture in our minds, taken from the sources in terms of our storage and utilization, ranging from um, the sources down, so say energy generation part, um, the oil refinery, cement industry, iron and steel industry, as it is maybe chemical sectors as well. Now, before you go down, you have to separate the CO2, shown you in a uh, figure. And these are the separating uh, methods, just like that part I mentioned. You have the absorption, absorption, chemical looping, looping, calcium looping, hygienic. These are more, uh, these are areas that could be researched in terms of that for Nigeria, that prospects that could be um, looked into. And down for the transport, as I said, while we were talking geologically, the same way you transport um, um, gases, natural gases, as LNG, uh, liquefied um, gases as well, the same way you are going to transport CO2. Now, either you use pipeline, this route, or ship as well. And when you want to utilize, uh, in terms of storage, you use geologic and ocean. Now, uh, under geologic, there are several. Um, media itself. Now, in terms of utilization now for the chemical, uh, we have the carbon utilization of organic substances. These are new, what you can use it for mineral carbon, carbonization, polymers, mm -hmm. for, and so on and so forth. Now, CO2 solvents. These are just the usefulness of um, CO2 when it's being captured and stored. Uh, this whole chain in terms of uh, from separation down to uh, storage. All right, now, potential for storage in Nigeria. Now, before you store, there are several um, considerations you're, you're support as, as, as a geologist or as an environmentalist or as a policy maker or an investor you're supposed to uh, consider. Now, geologically, can we, we have to think uh, the sites, what are the site, what type of sites are you doing? What's the criteria? What's the thickness? Is it close to source? Is it close to source, like CO2 emission sources. Now, like uh, the uh, Niger Delta, we tend to have the, um, the where gas flares uh, are being flared. So we could store them directly in um, depleted oil and gas reservoirs. So it's closer to its source. And you move down to a number of years, and let's say you get the, the coal industry that's still functioning. Yeah, you can get um, from the coal fire plants down, you store down to this um, part. So those are the things you consider. What's the population? What is, what, what do you expect? What is storage capacity? That's preliminary theoretical that this is have to be put in place. But before then, after then, you start considering Okay, there are two ways to suggest that CO2 formation. We have the physical and chemical, as I've stated here. The physical mechanism simply involves the trapping of CO2 within the cavities of rock that's within the subsurface. Now, um, this diagram here, I don't know if it's that clear, but these um, yeah, the four yes. types of trapping. Uh, can you see it? Yes, I can. Okay, okay, good. So, uh, we have the structural trapping, residual trapping, dissolution trapping, and mineral trapping. So these are just different means by which the structure you are looking at the cap rock of the um, of, of the particular um, is it going to capture it within when you store it there. Really, what will it be doing? You are looking at either is having a fault zone, it's having a water zone space within that place, and you believe it not to take it out from there. It's not going to come up. 
it's not going to um, maybe leak in terms of CO2 leakage. These are the environmental risk one should consider. So, but residual dropping is just uh, this this is a phenomenon in terms of it's looking at it. Oh, and the mineral trapping believes that uh, mineralization will be changes within. Now, we're not talking about something of uh, 50 years, 100 years. This is taking millions of years. When you study down, they believe that it changes within time. Now, for the chemical uh, mechanisms, CO2 is trapped in this type of system and converting it or chemically attaching to another component in the ground. Okay, that's what I uh, kind of um, uh, showed in this part here in my previous um, explanation. So, as I've earlier said, uh, the, the following geological formations are considered suitable for CO2 storage. So, several research are still going on. We have the matured oil and natural gas, even depleted oil and gas reservoirs, oil, yeah, uh, oil and gas rich organic shale, an economic coal beds, or uh, mineable coal beds, deep aquifers, saturated with brackish water, that's the line aquifer, salt cavings, basalts. This is just showing them. ECBM, this is the coal, it's saline aquifer, and you can notice they all range within depth, several depths within the subsurface. Okay, also, this is also depicting it in another angle, just showing in different perspective um, what are uh, the geological storage options, several opinions, depleted oil and gas that this could be done within. You can notice there are several caps, a ceiling uh, mechanism within them. Showing um this is um now we're looking at the derrick here on this on C. This this is where uh we're seeing uh where um, oil is being mined, um being explored, exploited within some surface down there if it has depleted, it can also store uh, not just storing, it's also economical that while if it's been depleted, it can help um recover more. Within, instead of just using the fundamental uh, water flooding, which um, might not be used to also causes its own pollution as its own uh, residual water itself. The CO2 will stay within the subsurface and you can get more fuel oil, even for coal bed. That's coal bed methane itself, the gas itself, uh, which could be biological or uh, thermogenic, as the case may be. Depends on the type of coal. Yeah, those are things you need to consider within the. Um, Area. So this just depicts it in the bigger picture. Uh, Derek, just what I just what is just depicted here, showing here CO2 is being captured, um, being captured, and here go to oil and gas, whether in some of these or, or onshore, or offshore, as case may be. You see, unmineable codes are closer; they don't have so much depth. So most people opt for these parts here. I think for Nigeria, we are moving towards this first. Studies have been done on this. Well, I'm working on this presently, though. Your mind will go. So, now, here is a chart I had to bring up to depict this. Now, this map here depicts several sedimentary. Um, in Nigeria, I have six sedimentary basins. Yeah, we have the Sokoto, we have the Niger Delta, we have the Anambra, we have the Daome Basin, which we call the Benin Basin, we have the Chad Basin. And um, we have, um, yeah, that's a, a Bida Basin, that's a Big Ninja Basin, um, Benue Troy itself. So there are six um, major parts. Any other other parts that are not within these basins are um, 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 solid, and we call it basement complex. Basement mm -hmm. complex rocks where we have the granite, chakitic rocks, and the likes. Uh, different ages, yeah, all these other ones. But the green ones are more sedimentary, cretaceous. Uh, this is Niger Delta here within here. Now, as I just pointed out, this is where oil and gas is in mine. And we have a cement factory put at a way at a way to Ibeche in, um, uh, Ogun State. Yeah. And, uh, we have in Obajena as well in the district. Yeah. And we have down the coal mine within Anambra Basin. And that's not the only place you can get coal, right? We don't have in Lafia, we have some parts of um, um, some parts of Bombay. We're having some parts of um, well, I would have put uh, Emo states. We have in several parts. Well, you see, the one in Anambra Basin, particularly in Enugu, is more mature and several several that's been mined, that's been explored, that's been exported as well. 
to just several policies. Uh, we're going to discuss more on that question. So I'm just saying, now looking at this, they are closer to sources if we're looking, and they have the, the, the basins. Now, this you can easily store down here once once um, search available and everything is done and suitable, find the pitted. Um, there are more gas gas fields, especially in the Anambra Basin. Yeah, we have gas fields as well. Talk more of, and they, uh, recently they even discovered uh, road oil around Gauchi. Yes, yeah. reasonable. Yeah, that was discovered. So, you see, geologically, there are several mills which uh, still to come stored within Nigeria. Yeah. As the case may be now dependent on um, where um, these sources are. We can't even, if it can be stored here, we can't say we want to go uh, uh, and drive, take a pipeline from here down to Sokoto to go and store our uh, CO2. <laughs> it's going to be capital intensive, right? So basically, if you are doing, um, if you are doing a, um, Say a criteria study uh, selection site selection. These points which are picked, these areas here, yeah, are more suitable in terms of storage. For you just get down, you no, know, just the same pipeline they're using. The only difference in these three um, industries I've mentioned is that uh, that of the cement factory, they have to make pipelines or other means uh, retrofit new um, integrations and. Um, uh, let's say, you know, several, um, they will have to make pipelines for this, that will be cool, or as the case may be, whatever it is to, to transport the CO2, because at least it's still closer than going to these other areas. Yeah, these other areas also have their other advantages, which I'm going to mention very soon itself in the conclusion. So now, recent development here in Nigeria, as you all see, around, um, around September, yeah, there was a meeting with several stakeholders where we have all, almost some oil companies, um, some ministry people who they likes them and the uh, international finance, that's IFC and World Bank, right? Uh, they are planning to work with the government of Nigeria to develop a domestic market for carbon capture utilization and storage for industrial emissions. That's an area that could, in terms of accelerating, Energy transition. Yeah, this is another topic that is been uh, playing a lot of tricks towards in Nigeria and Africa as a whole, and help Nigeria reach its emission targets. Now, this is what the uh, initiative wants to achieve at least before June of this year, right? The initiative will produce a nationwide atlas of uh, CO2 emission sources and potential sites for underground sequestration, which I've just pointed out uh, in a um, rough format. IFC will work with the government to identify the most promising sectors and private companies that can pilot new technologies, both for capturing, utilization, and storing carbon. Right? Uh, these, these are recent developments that are coming up. Uh, yes, they've already proposed it, they've started it. I met some people at uh, Halliburton. They're already working on this. They're the consulting firm and some other firms. Which they are still, you know, they hope to use GIS for site characterization based on depth and several other areas. And, um, within Nigeria, looking at the source and looking at how far is it and where is the potential, where are the prospect, what are the storage capacity, potential storage capacity of these, um, of these, um, areas and the industry per se. Now, uh, some prominent opportunities for carbon removal as a whole. In Nigeria, I include planting massive new forests. That's, that's afforestation, afforestation. Yes, let me talk some, let me shed some light on this. Yeah, in the northern region of Nigeria, if you move towards, um, Bauchi, um, parts, that's the, that area, a lot of forests there, yeah, right? Naturally just growing. Yeah. So those ones are there and more can still be planted. We have vast land in the northern parts which we can intensify and they have a lot of dams around there as well if this could be made the potential for storing co2 capture naturally it's just the land and their lands are available for it now also 
Number two, using no-till agriculture and other practices to increase the amount of carbon stored in soil and soil carbon sequestration. This is also sustainable because, you know, aside from uh, whether our economy in Nigeria is just a one-way economy where we are looking at just the oil industry itself, we have agriculture. So also, we could have a slight to that angle. A lot of people plant several, like every, almost every house is to come towards the northern part of Nigeria. They have these plant plantations around them. Uh, so if we use this, if as I'm going to if sensitize, okay, I'm going to make that statement, if sensitization is going to work, even more of it. And uh, number three, capturing and sequestering carbon from biofuels. Okay, this also applies now bioenergy with CCS or biological aspect of it, right? I'm looking at the biology, aside from just CCS, which I'm just talking, we have the BECCS, this is biological aspect of it, energy biofuels. So we're talking about uh, we're looking at the um plants, is um the kind of plants you are intentionally planting to sequester this and uh, the biofuels when we're looking at um uh, there's a name of this um when we get this this particular ethanol yes ethanol those gas several we now start looking at circular economy as well in this case here yeah, this is uh, possible to look at this part of it where we capture and sequester within the same farmland and we use this we utilize them instead of using um the uh, first of all, though we still need those ones mm -hmm. uh, at the point I'm still going to discuss more at my conclusions. So, uh, number four, geological story. As Avelia said, this is more prominent first. And uh, number one, also, so this is obtainable. This looks more of the industrial. This will help that number for geological storage, which will start helping the industries so in terms of capturing and storage. And this, this make money, mm -hmm. just depends on funding and more research to be done. Now, in conclusion, right? As a uh, been saying the whole point uh, what I've been trying to make is that we've been trying to make is a skill to remove our utilization. It's possible in Nigeria, right? It's just um we have to start with some and um however as I just said now there's need for more sensitization see there at all level. Seriously, I'm going mm -hmm. to present um CO2 explaining uh, it could be captured, it could be done. I've always been met with several uh, perceptions. And uh, is this possible? Is this how will it happen? How will it help? So I still feel there is need for more education, right? Yeah. Because yeah. there have been so much yeah. to it. Yes, we know the developed world. Yeah, likes of US and the Americas, um, Russia, China. China is very extensive work. They're using everything. Yes, we're going to take a cue from them. We still need to do more sensitization that everybody has a role to play here. And this is what it is. It's not that it's taking a hold of this. It's, this is the study effect. This study risk. But we need to, if we have to come as climate advocates, and yes, we might say we are not emitting so much, unlike um, countries that already have stationary grids for their for their energy. Yes, they'll tell you that we need more energy in Nigeria to start using alternative energies or um, green energy as it is the light of solar and the like. I say, yes, but we still need more to do these things in a clean way. So we need more of sensitization and education, like drastic. And we can start from uh, the um, younger uh, classes from primary, secondary schools. And we go on to educate this plant tree, CA tree, reduce your energy, reduce the bulb, switch or all this all these talks and tell them about CO2 and the likes of other greenhouse gases, the effects, the implication of this, why this is this, why is this, why this, and these are means by which we can remove CO2. Now, finally, likewise, you know, the international collaboration will help fast track this, obviously, you know, uh, yeah. this technology yeah. for uh, CDR within the country and African continent at large. Yeah, because I believe if, yeah, it's obtainable in Nigeria, it can be done. Yeah. Other sub-Saharan Africa will start taking a cue, obviously, because it's going to transit from there, over there, down to them. Because we still believe Nigeria is giant of Africa. So, but well, we know South Africa have gone far in doing things like this without all bias. They've gone far in checking their potential and looking at it, even if they don't have the crew there, which we have to some extent, even though they're just peace sovereign, just still making um, several um, e uh, exploration. So we have this already, and these things are already, they are already state of the art and we're already utilizing them. So CO2 can be stored and it can be removed in Nigeria.
these are my sources. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Victor. Like, we're almost out of time, but like, uh, what's it called? You really managed to put it in a very um, concise and um, accurate way, the potential and the opportunities for us in, um, in Nigeria. And like, yeah, as as what you said, yes, more advocacy, more policy, more, um, and more, generally more sensitization on this subject will drive the, um, the adoption and promotion of CDR efforts in Nigeria. So I just want to say a very big thank you. Um, um, Chris, do you want to come in and just say a few words to uh, Dr. Victor before we run out in our last minute? Yeah, excellent presentation, Doctor. Appreciate it. Um, one, yeah. I had a couple of different questions. Um, one of them is you just laid out, you know, some of the significant um, physical resources and economic resources, uh, as well as some of the really important emissions reductions uh, strategies and commitments that uh, Nigeria is making. But I'm, I'm, I'm interested in actually asking your question about the sort of the, the human resources, I guess, in, in Nigeria. It's, I believe, the, the most populated uh, country in Africa, uh, certainly yeah. one of the top three largest economies in Africa. Yeah. But I've also, I know that there's a lot of people with PhDs globally uh, in sciences that are Nigerian. I, I read a statistic that in the United States, the group within the U.S. that has the highest number of per capita PhDs are Nigerian Americans. Um, that's yeah. a small uh, part of the population, but it's significant, I think. And so I'm curious, yeah. what do you look at when you look at Nigeria about the potential of Nigerian talent and skill at really contributing to CDR acceleration, both in Nigeria and globally? Okay. Yes. Thank you for that. Truly. We have so much um, um, potentials in terms of human capital. And um, truth be said, uh, uh, while I started my research with this, yeah, when I made uh, my Google search, there are lots of, um, yeah, I see, see Nigerians working on skill to capture and the likes, especially down to Texas, down to, um, down to Texas, you go down to, Oklahoma, you go down to Colorado, that's every school. Most of the uh, professors there that are Nigerians, yeah, they are working on CCUS and they've done extensive research and lots of um, credible publications on this. So that there are means of collaborating and bringing this set of people back down to Nigeria to say, oh, yes, they are aware of these things, right? And um, they know this is possible down there. But uh, the constraint now is just policies, right? And just policies and um, coming back to sensitize a set of people and tell them, okay, this is obtainable now. You know, what we're what we talking about um, the whole climate change, we know the politics embedded in it, right? And they still believe, they still tell you that, yeah, the oil, we've not exhausted it. We, yeah, stay, we have a lot of things to do with it. And uh, we need to, but we tend to tell them that, come on. Uh, the environment is being um, destroyed, uh, gra- um, deteriorating gradually as you guys are flaring these gases. Why can't we make another chain of this? Okay, if you look at, we're talking about carbon credits, most of them were like, how does it going to benefit us? How will it help us? How will you do things like this? But I know if we have um, this, uh, this uh, product in diaspora coming back home, which seems on the scale of 10, they won't come back. It's too <laughs> coming back, but they could they could collaborate all the way from there to make sensible um, um sensible part of it. Now my center, yeah, we are getting most of them to do this in terms of those that have funds and with their labs. That's in terms of if your research is related to whatever any other person is doing. We have most people in chemistry. It's more like multidisciplinary, as the case may be. The OCCS um, chain, it's more multidisciplinary. Even me as a geologist, I have to understand the part of the chemical engineer, I have to understand the part of the physics, I have to understand the part of the biology itself. So we have lots of them itself. And we feel if that human character can come back, if we can collaborate with them, yeah, it's possible. Why the fund is made available, even within our country here, yes. We have people in the forestry aspect of it, as I'm saying, the vegetation aspect, renowned professors with vast knowledge of this that have gone over that's abroad and see things that are playable and if they are back already, they are working on this. So this is possible. They can collaborate with this with the good funding and policy. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and uh, Oriola, it'd be interesting to think about how, with open air, could we facilitate something like a Nigeria Innovator Network uh, as a mission, you know, for the Nigerian yeah. scholars and practitioners in Nigeria, but the Nigerian diaspora all working on making a more conducive environment uh, and forwarding CDR and, and, and storage research globally. So that, that to be continued, we'll talk to you about that, Dr. Yeah, no problem. thank you. Yeah, and, and one other thing too, and I'd like Oriola's thoughts on this too, is that as Oriola might have told you, open air is really a, a, a community that's focused on carbon removal uh, from the air, not really carbon capture and sequestration. Though we acknowledge the important linkages between those two things, particularly when you talk about characterizing and developing uh, sequestration resources yeah. in, in a particular place. And yeah. so I'm wondering, obviously, as an oil state, uh, there's a lot of focus uh, publicly and out loud about carbon capture and sequestration. And we have some concerns about that, where sometimes that does allow for the perpetuation of certain you know, a fossil fuel economy. But do you have a sense that there is interest both among your peers and at the government level in carbon dioxide removal uh, and not just nature based, but more along the lines of direct air capture and engineered solutions? What's the state of play, the state of understanding and the state of interest in carbon dioxide removal in Nigeria, would you say? Okay. Yes. You know, I was saying something about sensitization at the completing part of my uh, of the talk. So that part is just coming in, yes, the likes of IFC and World Bank, yeah, that the set of people that are championing this. And we know they hold a foothold in Nigeria, lots of projects, lots of funding. And they've brought this fund now. And they are, I said, several stakeholders, right, from every parastata that has to do with the chain of energy. Yeah, they had this discussion in September. So it was welcoming, yes, and uh, trying to explain to them that, okay, it's not just the geological part that is obtainable, but they have to play towards their interests at first. That's which is geological part. Yes. That, oh, this, you can also make money as long as you're doing this. But we need to start doing this now. We need to start doing this in a clean way. Now, the part of Carbon removal, we know direct air capture can happen or you just want to remove from the air itself, not just flaring. We feel it's gradual, right? They buy this idea and we sell this another idea to them. That's what World Bank and IFC is trying to do in the first place. The whole um, um, memorandum is more than just that part. Uh, you know, the World Bank, they give it different deadline report, different parts of it. This is what we want to achieve at this program, this objective, this set time. While they're also doing, they won't take drastic sensitization around continuously. So I think the perception is changing gradually on the, on the scale, on like um, 2020, 2021, there's a increase. If I'm going to put on a scale from one to 10, it's increased from five to six or seven. That's great. Right. And I'll, I'll just add on to that is what do you think within the Nigerian? political and institutional context would be the most effective way as advocates or as forms of advocacy or knowledge raising, what could we do as an open air community with your help, with Aureola's help, with our growing Nigerian membership to try to accelerate that? Uh, what types of activities, what, what's the way that you have influence in Nigeria to make that six a, a 10? Okay. Yeah. I think the younger the younger generation, yeah, that's the that's basis. Now, let me look at this in this direction now. We're going to be having an election in April. Yeah. So we believe that um, the power should change as politically leadership. So it's going to be really dependent on who the next leadership is going to look like at this point. We're looking at that. But on our, in terms of our strengths, in terms of power, we can start with the younger people. That's where I feel the younger people from, uh, say, the secondary school, the likes, and we're talking about the education sector itself. Yeah. Because Be I feel that is more key. It's key. At yeah. The moment. Agree. And if I might just quickly jump in here, um, what yeah. politically like, or like policy wise, from a uh, governance approach, things are, you know, it's just, um, things are slowing down now because we're in the transition period. 
So policy-wise, most of our government activities are slowing down. But from May, when there will be a, a new cabinet, even um, from dip diplomatic organizations and um, aid, aid companies, like maybe USAID or XDFID, UKDFID, yes, where, they are, where they direct um, ODA or development as staff funding is, for now, things have taken... Um, a, a oh, chill period, but after April, once we are, once we see the um new administration, the the their cabinet, and we know um uh, what's it called, we know the direction of their climate policies, we can begin to make a more um concerted and a more focused um advocacy or a lobbying campaign to really um drive um, you know open air mission um drive um actual carbon removal um collaboration and uh, legislation among you know. Nigerian police candidates, but yeah. So we every, right now, everything everybody is just waiting for the new political dispensation. I wonder if we could if we could get ready for that. You know, April's a few months off, and it would be interesting mm. to think of could we, led by 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 you and others, develop a kind of a public mm. carbon removal agenda that maybe is a little bit of a divergence from the way the focus of only on ccs right um you know that would be an interesting thing is to start organizing sure. another alternative vision that we could try to publicly assert in nigeria i don't know what that would look like though like how, how do you do that in nigeria we have ideas of how to do that in the united states and other countries yeah. that we work in but how, how do you have that influence in nigeria <laughs> um doctor so let's so let's see because even the current administration the the <laughs> president took like almost a year to to decide his cabinet. So we didn't we, did, we didn't even know who was going to lead. Can't wait for them, huh? truly. Yeah. yeah, we didn't even know who was going to lead. So basically, I think what we can do is that we can we can begin the like the open air Nigerian network community for people that are like are promoting engineer solutions. Like we had um what's the name Taiwan the open air community who is currently doing his masters in like so. We could begin to lay the groundwork now. Pe people like um, Dr. Victor and some of his peers in, in academia. So we could begin to have the network. Then when the political situation is a bit more stable, because at the end of the day, whoever leads um, um, policy directions, they are most likely political appointees. They don't really, really know. They won't really know much when it comes to the technical details. Then we can uh, uh, present, we can at least yeah. present them with a framework or um, we can present them what we have developed so far in the months and don't you know, just give us, put us ahead of the queue, put us in their eyes and minds. Uh, what do you have to say about that, Dr. Victor? What do you think? Uh, yes, uh, it's, it's, a lobbying, it's a lobbying situation. You can't go ahead to start lobbying with those that you don't know if they're going to be there, mm -hmm. right? In the next um, dispensation, next government. Uh, and so you have to strategically um, plan it we are looking at the bigger picture while we make um, spaces. Okay, if this happens, if this happens, if this happens, this is what we should, we should get. If this possibly happens, this is what we should get. This is what we should go ahead. So we have to make those two plans, two way, two way uh, of meeting our goal. Yes. Yeah. So we have to start doing something, as you said. We need to just start doing something. Yeah. Um, just keep building it up. Oh, this is have been in this place because for real, if you are going to meet an NGO, the like of USID mm. or other, there are, there are lots of them around. We yeah. Follow and start talking. Okay. They'll so ask you, what have you guys been doing? What? Is yeah, they need to see some track record. Right? Yeah. They need to see some track records. These are what you've been doing. That's what I was saying. Oh, can we start some sensitization within schools, within these lights and those ones while we are still building a bigger template of what we want to present to this? said government officials and the ones we have links to and let's say other organizations. So I feel just... maybe now is the point Chris might give you a formal invitation to open it. <laughs> on yes, I was just about to say that. I was gonna say it sounds like a mission. Uh, it was what we call uh doctor um any any type of activity that open air members uh, try to advance to accelerate carbon removal, uh, whether it's making yeah. things or policies. Uh, we call those missions, and I, I think that Nigeria is ripe to to missionize. Uh, and it, it would be amazing to to have you really involved in that. And I wonder too, um, both locally, uh, your peers, and in the diaspora, both among 
engineers and scientists, but also people that are maybe more on the policy side. Um, yeah. Do you see a network that already exists that could be tapped for that, that you're already a part of? I mean, you've, you've sort of alluded to it already, but I'm curious if you could elaborate a little further. Uh, yeah, that's some, you know, it's just chemistry. Let's say you've been coming up with this yes, as a network already. It's just, um, you know, uh, pushing. We just need this drive, you know, drive of such uh, magnitude ourselves uh, to, to push this aside. Several of them have been so busy. As I said, you see our political scene right now, it's making lots of, um, letting, keeping lots of decision hanging. Lots of decision hanging. So but we've been doing lots of this within um, uh, the small confines we have. We've been spreading this both for tertiary institution, secondary, and the likes. So there are networks available for that. You can see champion is ahead of it, right? So it's just going to be on us as a case study. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Any final thoughts, Ariel? This is fantastic, uh, both for the presentation, but for what we just discussed. I, I feel incredibly excited about uh, trying to mobilize and, and really make uh, Nigeria uh, more prominent as a, as a center for, for carbon dioxide removal, advocacy, and innovation. Um, but yeah, any final thoughts, uh, Oriola or, or Dr. Victor? Well, I just want to say thanks to um, you, Dr. Victor. I know it took uh, maybe a while to to organize this and thanks Chris you know our motive out Nigeria even though there's a lot of problems but still it's still a front runner on the continent so like basically any significant policy shift or direction that the Nigerian government appears to take can dictate the tunes for for sub-Saharan Africa so if um, we can really if Nigeria can you know Get his acts together and to no to no small efforts by Okuna. I'm sure that we'll be able to to make a resounding impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I concur with you. So yeah. lots lots of decisions are going to made that way. So yeah. I think uh, all my thoughts have been shared. And <laughs> I feel yeah, well, I, I concur as well. I concur as well, and uh, to be continued very soon. But I, I want to say, on behalf of Open Air, um, Doctor, um, welcome to the Open Air community. Uh, we we look you. forward to, to involving you. <laughs> um, right. Thank you. Thank you.